Hello and welcome to another episode of Parker's Previews powered by The Hammer. This is a show where we're going to take stats, we're going to take data, we're going to take advanced analytics and a look at some matchups this week so that we can be better investors as we approach these games and we can be better consumers of college football content as we watch these matchups. Uh, quick housekeeping notes, this is the first of three shows. You can get these shows on video um, wherever you find your videos on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can find these videos on, uh, or sorry, the audio version of these videos on podcasts, um, wherever you get your podcasts as well. Uh, note that we're rolling all of our college football content at the hammer into hit the books CFB. So make sure you're following that on Twitter. That'll be the YouTube channel, like subscribe, all that stuff. Got a couple other shows on there as well that are pretty great. And again, just trying to make this a more streamlined experience so that you can find the content that you want in, in the most easy uh, and, and um, simple way. So whew, got a bunch of matchups this week. Got some interesting thoughts and trends here as we get into the, the uh, end of the college football season. Did want to take a quick look at the college football landscape first and kind of talk about who is good, who is real, who is fake, who's not fake, and um, and just kind of peruse a little bit. So what we have here is uh, the scatter plot of... Um, these uh, college football efficiency. So uh, you have defense on the x-axis, y on the uh, y, or offense on the y-axis. The further out and to the right you are, the better team you are. So um, looking at teams that really don't have an efficiency based on opponent-adjusted metrics, um, we're talking about your LSU's, UCLA, Utah, Kansas State, Alabama, Illinois. It's kind of the line of who's good and who's you know who's okay, who has some issues. Maybe TCU, Texas up there on the good line and you include Oregon. So if I were just going to draw a line horizontally, let me find my shapes. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to draw a line from like Oregon to Minnesota and then maybe drag it out just a little bit to include TCU because I'm a homer. Um, that's probably the axis of who's good right there, cutting off that line. So obviously Ohio State is leading the nation in opponent-adjusted EPA per play margin, positive 0.164. Michigan's right behind them. Georgia is third. Tennessee's fourth. Alabama fifth. Illinois sixth. Utah seven. Kansas State eight. UCLA nine. LSU is 10 and TCU is 11th there. So again, there are some good teams overall. There are some good teams um, who are balanced in different ways. You see Penn State is up there. Florida State is up there. Um, they're both um, very good teams as well. UCLA getting a little bit better on defense. Oregon, the big deal there is um, they're kind of out of this top numbers just because their defense has been so problematic. But when you can score like that, you know, who do you, who do you think is going to... Um, who can really stop you, <laughs> as we saw in the UCLA game when UCLA has a very good offense. Um, the there, There's some interesting clusters here that I really like. If we look at these teams that are in the top left, you get this really fun picture of USC, uh, BYU, North Carolina, Arkansas, Florida, Kansas, Oklahoma, Ole Miss, Washington, Duke. All those teams are very good um, offensive teams, all better than average offensively, all worse than average on defense. These are kind of your extreme imbalance teams as well. Um, the teams that are pretty severely lacking um, in one side of the ball. Um, we'll talk about a couple of those today as we as we move forward. Um, then I think if you look at, you know, this bottom right, you kind of have the inverse as well. You have these teams that are Decent at one thing, um, but but you know really bad at uh, at the other side of the ball. Minnesota's come down a lot. Iowa State, Iowa are basically the same team. Good offense or good defense. Absolutely no offense to speak of. Missouri is doing their best Iowa impersonation, and then you've got some more kind of uh, underwhelming teams. Your 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 Kentucky's, your Pitt, your Auburn, your Virginia, Notre Dame, Louisville, Washington State, Mississippi State, Clemson's in that in that quadrant now. Just some teams who aren't as um, as balanced. So you kind of have a quality uh, a quality arc here and then you've got two team two sections of teams that are good at one thing and then kind of imbalanced um, the the third way or the fourth way that I would divide this up is this middle group of teams that kind of goes um, you know briefly I think that's too far down right in right in here you've got I think TC is probably in that you've got your TCU Texas Wake Forest Maryland Baylor Purdue Syracuse Texas Tech Oregon State Wisconsin and um, Teams that aren't like very good at 
anything, but aren't super bad at anything. So there's this balance there. They've had good and bad performances. Maybe they're young, maybe they're underperforming, maybe they're overperforming um, based on the windows. Teams that you would kind of say, oh, I don't know that you're necessarily someone I would pick as a favorite against, you know, any anybody else in any other any other group. The last group here is just kind of the disaster teams. Uh, I guess you could break up the disaster teams into two groups. You have your wow, what's going on group. That's going to be your normal bad teams, right? Oklahoma State absolutely falling apart with injuries. South Carolina, Indiana, Cal, Nebraska, Miami, Michigan State, Northwestern, uh, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech, Stanford, Rutgers, Boston College. All of them have worse than average offense and worse than average defense. They're just not good on either side of the ball, really um, just not putting themselves in position to win games. There's some obvious explanations for some of those, and there's some um, a little bit more nuanced explanations, but generally those are teams that just aren't that good right now. Then you kind of have your disaster crew over here on the back uh, left. You've got, you know, West Virginia, Arizona, Arizona State, Vanderbilt, Colorado, just teams that are entirely feckless, um, have, have really, really had some issues this year and, uh, and, and definitely are not teams I'd, I'd like to bet on at this point in the season. You can see that, um, you know, there's some, some instant matchups that kind of make sense about how I'm going to pick teams and where they're going to where they're going to go uh, again, just visually. Let's look at some of these bigger games this weekend. You have, you know, Colorado, USC. Hey, Colorado's down here. USC is up here. I think that um, if I was going to bet on USC, I would think, man, their offense is going to strictly dominate Colorado State's or Colorado's offense. Um, but the defensive quality is so bad. We'll see what happens there. So again, that line is at 31. I don't know. Uh, it's at 34 now. And you're like, yeah, I don't know if there's reason to bet that big of a line, given that USC has been so bad on defense. Um, another example would be Oklahoma, West Virginia. I'd love to bet Oklahoma in this spot. They're, um, you know, right, right up here. But West Virginia is not too far away from them. Oklahoma has such a severe deficiency on on defense. I just don't know that I trust them to cover a seven and a half point spread on the road against a West Virginia team who's bad but who has shown moments where they can, you know, can play offense against bad defenses. Um, what's another good one? Pitt, Pitt Virginia is, is interesting because they're, they're both right in the same spot, right? They're, it's that Pitt to Auburn to Virginia continuum in terms of, hey, you've got a pretty decent defense and your offense is worse than average. Um, I don't have a strong lean there because those two teams are very similar there. And so this is a you know, a three and a half point spread, you start to look at the numbers and you think, oh, I can understand why that spread's so close. I don't, I don't know that I see a lot of value there. So um, a fun um, just kind of way to visually interpret who's good, who's bad, who might who might you want to cover. Uh, again, as we're being better consumers of football content, smarter investors, this is a good way. This graph is on my Twitter. You can go look at it. A good way to kind of break this out and say, oh, I understand what teams are, um, you know, which teams are, are, are looking like what this season. Um, let's go ahead and before we get to our matchups this week, we will go to uh, the expectations versus reality graph. Let's look at the consensus spread point differential versus against um, the actual point margin. So again, I won't go in, in detail this week as I did last week when I kind of unveiled it, but this week we're, we're talking, we're looking through this. Um, you can see again, just some absolute outliers here. Tennessee, who didn't want to do that. Uh, Tennessee is uh, again again up here in the top corner they're they're you know better than better than average but with that uh losses last weekend they actually fell to fourth um louisville keeps rising louisville's at top of the um at top of the list right here they're 96.5 total points better than the spread would expect this year duke also number number two 83.5 points kansas with a win as an underdog this weekend moves into third with 78 they tie tennessee so kansas and tennessee the same team in terms of outperforming expectations notice michigan is rising up and up they're they're really the the only um kind of elite expectation team that is outperforming the expectations. You know, Georgia and Ohio State are about where you'd expect. Alabama, much better than normal. Um, Oklahoma, still struggling. BYU, still struggling, but got a win as a dog. They've moved back towards the middle. They've separated from Miami, who lost a game as a, as a favorite this weekend and is, and is certainly uh, continuing to struggle. Um, Miami is the worst team in terms of comparing, comparing your margin to the spread at a negative 125.5 points. 
That's how much they've underperformed. That is um, just absolutely absurd. Absurd. Um, there's some there's some teams that I'd say, hey, maybe uh, you know, again, always got to shout out UConn because they're doing so well given bad expectations. Um, and then there's kind of a, a nice little axis in here of teams that I think are um, underrated winners this season. So if you look in this range right here, I'm going to include ECU intentionally um, and uh, just pretend. Yeah, that my line is it's a little different there. I'll add another box to make this more scientific. But these these teams right here are um, your teams that are going to kind of be uh, reliable but boring winners. So you've got Ohio, Kansas, Georgia Southern, Navy. They're going to be underdogs in a lot of games. They're going to be expected to lose, and they've they've won. They've performed better than possible, uh, or better better than expected. Buffalo, UNT, Troy, Washington State, Duke, Liberty, Kansas State, LSU, ECU. Oregon State, um, and then Louisville and North Carolina kind of round that out are teams who are, you know, maybe favored, maybe not in a lot of their games, but outperforming regardless. So again, a nice little collection of kind of quiet winners there. Just something to keep in mind as you're looking at matchups. Will this tilt uh, or inform, hey, I should bet this way? Absolutely no. But on the margin, I think it could be interesting to... Um, to pit one game I'm not going to talk about this week because I'm terrified of it is this TCU Texas game. Look at how close they are in terms of outperforming expectations. Um, you pull that you know Alabama win out and TCU and Texas are about the same relative to the spread. Texas is favored by seven. What's going to happen this weekend will be interesting to see some separation there as well. Western Kentucky stands out among G5 teams as having some of the highest expectations and outperforming them. Again, this graph is on my Twitter. You can go you know look at it in detail. Just a fun way to kind of help us calibrate who's winning, who's losing. And by how much, how might that inform our bets? All right, four games. We're going to go four games, 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, we're doing it. We're cruising. That is great. Let's go ahead and start with Kansas State Baylor. A um, interesting Big 12 matchup here. Uh, you, you, you've you got Kansas State, who's had some issues with health, who's kind of gotten healthy and looks to be maybe the best team in the Big 12. I think they certainly think that they are. Um, Baylor has been getting a little bit better this last season, uh, th- or this this last stretch of the season, um, specifically with, you know, kind of understanding what they want to ask quarterback Blake Shapin to do and how they want to attack um, opponents there. So uh, if I'm looking at this, let's see if I can pull this up, make sure I'm saying all this correctly. Um, you have, you know, Baylor is averaging 38.3 points per game. They're allowing 24.6. Kansas State, 30.6 points per game, 19.1 points allowed. Kansas State certainly weighed down by very bad games against Tulsa. Uh, not Tulsa, Tulane, um, who's, you know, that 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 is um that win is or the loss is aging a little bit better. But Baylor is the is the favorite here. It's 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 at three, it's down to two and a half. This game makes me a little bit nervous. 74% of the bets are on Baylor, 72% of the money. I'm gonna go against um I'm gonna go against my my better judgment in terms of uh, being a TCU fan. And uh, I I think I'm actually gonna take Kansas State here to cover to keep this close. Baylor last week played Oklahoma in a game where, I mean, they ran for, uh, you know, 200 something yards, like absolutely crazy performance in the run game. Uh, 192 from Craig Squirrel Williams for Baylor. Oklahoma could not tackle to save their lives. Um, Baylor allowed Oklahoma 10 of 15 on third downs. Baylor allowed Oklahoma uh, only average 5.7 yards per pass. They allowed 7.7 to um, to Oklahoma. And again, 5.9 yards per rush compared to 5.3 yards per rush for, for Oklahoma. So uh, basically the way I was looking at this game last week and why I'm fading Baylor at home a little bit is they played a really, really rough game against Oklahoma. They were uh, plus two in turnovers. They got 10 points on a total of 28 yards from those turnovers. And Oklahoma could not tackle a running back to save their lives. And Oklahoma still had the ball with a chance to win at the end of this game. Only one, only lost by three. So um I think that's an odd performance against Baylor. Um, and, and you know, the Aranda teams are going to, uh, the Aranda teams are going to, you know, try and play that, like, let's squeeze every marginal advantage we have. Let's go for fourth down. Let's, um, you know, get these short fields and score and capitalize on them. They do that a lot. But generally, um, I, I think that the way they've won the last couple of weeks, it has me a little bit concerned. And so a favorite against a pretty good Kansas State team, um, is 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 troublesome. Kansas State, of course, coming off a 
loss against um, Texas, where they, you know, they kind of dug themselves a hole, fought back, but just too little too late, couldn't couldn't win. Um, note that for Kansas State, in terms of predictive purposes, um, Julius Brents, one of their better cornerbacks, maybe their best cornerback, you know, stupid hit on the on the second play of the game. And I'm not going to adjudicate tar- targeting here, but basically he made a hit that was dumb. And by the rule of targeting, he was going to get tossed for that hit, regardless of what he did. And so he went out and that's really when Texas found, you know, Texas capitalized early. Once the game flow kind of shifted, Texas scored t- three touchdowns on their first three drives after after Brent went out. Um, and then, you know, after that, so that at that point, it's 21-10, Kansas State, outscores them um, 17-13, plays a pretty even game there without Brents as things settle down. So Brents, good thing for Kansas State. That was in the first half. He's going to be back. Um, I really like this passing offense, 34th in EPA pass compared to 54th for Baylor's defense. And when Baylor's run the ball well, they're 102nd in rush rate over expected. Um, they're 33rd in EPA per rush, but they're 16th in rushing success rate. Kansas State's defense is allowing uh, is 30th in rushing success rate. So they've given up a couple big runs that have hurt them, but generally the big runs have not been kind of the kryptonite. Kansas State has been or not been kind of how Baylor's winning. Baylor's winning with these kind of solid move the chains runs. So I think that Kansas State will be able to um, stall them and and keep this close. I think Kansas State's playing a little bit better than their record. So Kansas State uh, plus two and a half. If you can get it at three, all the better. I think that's gone, but I'm going to stick with my guns here and say two and a half. I like this. I have this as a true toss up. And I think that overall, um, Kansas State should be able to keep this close. All right. So we're taking a road dog in game one. Game two, we're going to take a road favorite. Syracuse is a fake team. I hate it. I hate that I have to say that, but let's go back to the um, let's go back to the graph here. We can see that Syracuse is um, underperforming, um, and Florida State has been kind of overperforming. Florida State's in here. Syracuse is buried behind Wisconsin and, and Mississippi State. Um, I think that we've seen what Syracuse is, and we know what they are. Um, the strengths for for Florida State have been their passing defense, which is very good. Or passing offense, sorry, 14th overall. And uh, Syracuse is 11th in EPA per pass. And so that's going to be best on best. But I think the difference here is going to be Syracuse is going to have to account for Jordan Travis and his legs. His, he's really improved his decision making. He's not running for his life anymore. Um, so Florida's run defense is a little or run offense is a little worse than you'd expect. But um, I really like them against the Syracuse rush defense, which has shown that it's not very good the last couple of games. Um, another thing that's really great, you know, Florida, Florida State super explosive on early downs, but also third and fourth down success. They're 24th compared to Syracuse's defense of 53rd. This, this Florida State offense is going to move the ball against the Syracuse defense. Um, on the flip side, uh, the, the orange offense, 101st in EPA per pass, only 55th in EPA per rush. They're going to try and get... Uh, Sean Tucker super involved, but um, Florida State's defense 49th in EPA per pass and 13th in points per quality possession. Lastly, uh, Cuse has to avoid third downs. They absolutely have to. They're 98th and third and fourth down success. I think this is a recipe for kind of a um, a muddy game for for Syracuse. I like Florida State in this spot. If you look at the lines right now, it opened at seven. It's still at seven, so you can get that. Um, yeah, I think you get that seven maybe six and a half a couple places with no payment for that. So yeah, I would go six and a half all the better for <laughs> for Florida State here. I like how they're playing. I think they were underrated last year. Last year I was calling them the best, best X-win team, you know, because they had some losses. But overall, I think that they're playing pretty well. It's kind of coming together. They got out of the offensive line hole and I think they're currently underrated um, overall. So I'm going to take Florida State as the favorite uh, on the road here as well. We got two more games. We're going to go Alabama Ole Miss. We're going to go to um, a situation where I, I, I'm doing something that I don't normally do and that I'm fading a spot. I'm, I'm specifically making this bet, not only based on my numbers, which have Ole Miss um, losing by about eight points, but also um, I, I'm looking at specifically, I think you can hear my dog barking in the background. Apologies to production team for that. Um, I think what you can do here is Look at Alabama at home, which they are four and one against the spread. And on the road, they are one and three against the spread this season. Um, they, they're really not good. I think they're 40. Gosh, I looked this up. 47% against the spread since 2017 as a road favorite. So we've got another spot here. Um, Ole Miss runs the ball as much as anybody. They play fast, 
but they run the ball. 14th in rush rate over expected. Um, their offense is ninth in EPA per rush. They have multiple running backs in Judkins and Evans that can play, that can move the ball well. And um, I, I think they'll rotate through those guys. They'll rush early and often. And I think that the big issue um, for Alabama here is that their defense is really well suited to kind of prey on uh, an immobile quarterback in these third and long situations. But because they run so well, Ole Miss is really not facing that long of third downs and they're converting pretty well. They're 13th in um, third and fourth down success rate compared to 29th on early downs EPA. So this offense is very explosive. I think they'll get beat here, but looking at pace, looking at how much Ole Miss runs, I think they absolutely can keep this within 11 and a half, especially when you consider that um, Alabama played a very emotional game last week, especially when you consider that Alabama on the road has been very bad. So going to go with Ole Miss in this spot. Um, this defense is a little worrisome to me, but Alabama's offense, I think, has some, has some very serious structural issues as well. And so there will be points scored. Um, uh, but I think that the pace of this is going to be pretty slow, few possessions that's going to favor Ole Miss as the home dog this week. Let's see how I'm doing on time for I go to my fourth game. Oh, doing great on time. Doing great on time. Uh, trying to keep this snappy, trying to keep this informative. The last game this week, we're going to the G5. We're going to go to the Eastern Carolina Pirates playing at Cincinnati. The Pirates, they steal things, man. The, uh, that's, that's just what they do. Um, they've had a really, really good season. Uh, so far. And in this game, I have them as a 46% win probability outright compared to, uh, you know, the, the spread is minus five and a half, uh, I think now. And so I, this one is is really interesting. Yeah, you can get it straight at five right now. Um, this East Carolina offense is very good and the Cincinnati offense is not very good. Um, and so I, I like this one a whole lot. East Carolina, 32.3 points per game. Uh, 23.2 points allowed per game compared to Cincinnati, 33.2, 21.0 allowed. So I think this will be low scoring. I think this will be an absolute dogfight. Uh, East Carolina rushes the ball really, really well. 20th overall compared to uh, Cincinnati's 71st overall EPA offense. Lastly, East Carolina makes its hay on third downs. Cincinnati, very bad on third downs, 92nd in the nation. So that factors in well for what East Carolina wants to do. Um, and lastly, I, I think that, you know, Cincinnati's pass game has gotten better overall, but uh, I think this East Carolina defense is being weighed down by so earlier in the season stats. I don't think they're that bad. I think this should be closer to a toss up. So I'm going to go with East Carolina. All right. Those are my bets for this week. We're going to go East Carolina as a road dog, Ole Miss as a home dog, Florida State as a road favorite, and Kansas State as a road dog this week. Hope that your bets cash. Make sure you're following the Twitter uh, at Hit the Books and me on Twitter at Stats of War. Um, and we'll see you next week for a new set of bets and new set of previews.